I want to get the sun down right here. I don't know though. I think I might have actually missed it. And I may just get the trees painted in and then tomorrow I'll come back for the light. I'll have to see whether the sun comes back out or not. I ran right out of my house when I saw that sundown was coming. I have been going over to this park for several days now. It's very close to my home. I can pretty much just look out my door and see how the sky is going to be. And I knew it was going to get a little fiery this evening. But after getting to the park, I forgot my canvas and my medium. And I was really frustrated. I ran back home, got the canvas, came back again, got all set up, thought I lost the light, but it came back. But then without the medium, I was struggling trying to get this paint smooth until I get enough of a layer down, then I can paint over paint. But at any rate, 
yeah, you got to organize yourself so that you can just run out in a flash whenever needed. But I managed. I even had the, the wrong blue with me, which made the strangest color of green that I didn't want. I did not want to use Prussian blue. I wanted to use my ultramarine blue. But all worked out in the end because you can always rub out and you can always repaint. So if you get a little layer of your monotone color down, then you can just take your rag and wipe out your lights. This way you've got your depth showing. You've got the light, you've got the medium colors, you've got the dark colors. You can paint your whole painting with just one color. And it's a wonderful way of doing a value study. And I love that warmth in the background anyway. And then go back in and put your colors in later. Here I went ahead and put in some of the yellows because I just wanted to remind myself how bright the yellow was when it hit the grass in these areas. I did not think I would believe it when I got home. I wouldn't remember. I'd say, no, it couldn't have been that bright, but it was really bright. So even though I had the wrong blue and it made a crazy yellow and green, I still used it anyway just because I knew I would change it when I got back home.
Okay. Mmm. Sauteed onions. Mm. You can't beat that.
When I want to clean my brushes, I start out by squirting a couple of good squirts of Murphy's Oil Soap into my little dish. I use the same little dish all the time. I wipe my brush off the best I can. And then after I get most of the paint off by wiping it, not by rinsing it and not by putting it in turpentine because these are water mixable oils. I then turn on my hot water and rinse my brush the best I can. And it's pretty much clean. Some of that green there is just stain. But I'll put it back in again, mush it around a little bit more, just to be sure. Now, if you rinse this brush before you do this, I know it's tempting. You want to get as much of this paint off as you can, then dry your brush off the best you can because it doesn't make a paste once you've rinsed it. It makes sort of a wet slurry because the water starts to dissipate into the emulsion there and it becomes very, very thin. So this brush is now completely clean. It might not look like it, but it is. It is absolutely clean all the way down to the ferrule, which is something I can't do very well, even with mineral spirits. These brushes are years old and they continue to last forever with a nice big sharp point on them. So good luck. The work can always tell the brush is completely clean because you're not going to get any more color out of it. Now, if I was to squirt a tiny bit more of the Murphy's Oil Soap in here, my brush is now damp, so it's best if I dry it off a little, which I'm doing right now. Then I'll put it back in here. Work it around. Go down to the ferrule. work on the tip a little bit. This is a nice smooth china plate so it's not going to hurt my brush. But if I'm using a boar's bristle like this, sometimes if I'm struggling a little, I'll use my little screen to help scrub it a tiny bit. So like I said before, you're not getting any more color in that so it is completely clean. Now take your brush and squeeze it out really well. Get all that moisture out of it. Even if you want to put your hand on it and just give a good press. Get to another spot on the paper that's dry and press again. Hold and let go. That's about as dry as it's going to get. Now what you could do is put it in the paper and put something reasonably heavy on top of it for instance, and let it dry a little bit, just in case you've lost a little of the shape in your brush. By the next morning, it should come out looking brand new. So I'm working on finishing this up now. Remember, in my opinion, it's the artist's job to make something that's kind of mundane into something that is noticeable, extraordinary, something that people might not have even taken a second look at and turn it into something beautiful. It's very hard to take something that's utterly beautiful and paint it and ever get it as close to how nature really had it. This lot that I'm painting here, I call it a lot because there is actually an electrical outlet back here. There used to be a trailer here where the people who watched over the park at night would come out, a man who used a wheelchair, but he used to get himself into his little electronic cart and drive to the gate of the park and lock the, the park up at night and reopen it in the morning. Their trailer used to be here and they lived here for years. But I don't know why, for some reason, they stopped using um, someone to watch over the park and 
I guess they just went to having someone drive by and lock it up, which is sad. But anyway, this trail used to be here, and as soon as they moved it, my dog thought this was her favorite place to go. We would walk across the street to the park, and she would always want to sniff around in this lot, maybe because she could smell where the other dogs that used to live here um, roamed around. Maybe she could still smell them. I don't know. But she just loved getting her sniff time in. And we would walk over here almost every morning for her to use the bathroom and just take a small walk before her day started. But I always thought it was beautiful the way the light shined on it in the morning and in the evening. So I wanted to paint it. It reminds me of her and I just love this park. It's close by, small but very pretty. Horses come through here. Anyway, you see, I'm just putting little details on here and there, lightening up edges, darkening little dark areas. I'm putting a few of the characteristics that are in these trees. They have a few knots on them and some dark spots. The ground really was kind of a reddish brown color right there, but I'm going to take that out later because I think it confuses my shadows that I put in the painting. I hate to lose it, but Anything that confuses the viewer is not worth leaving it in. Maybe I'll add it in another spot as it goes along the vertical line of the shadow, perhaps, instead of leaving it in there horizontally across the picture, because it's kind of messing up the composition where it's at right now. Darn you, red color. You can't be there. You don't belong in my painting in that spot. LOL, I guess I have to say. <laughs> now you can't really see me going way up on top there. Boy, it's hard to be the camera person and the painter at the same time. I can't always see what my camera is on. I try to get it up close enough so you can see what's going on without putting my big head in the way. And believe me, it's a struggle because I'd like to be square in front of this painting when I'm painting it, not angled from the side like I am. You might not realize it, but I'm not really in front of it. So I'm kind of holding my hand, trying to steady it because I'd like to be standing up right there. And of course I can't be if I'm going to film it. So here I am kind of wiping out that, leaving just a little bit of it in. And I think that helped. Putting in the um, shadows a little darker. I put one in shining from behind some of those trees that are back there. So we're just about done here. A couple more little final details and another painting will be finished.
Thank you.